Mortgage giants Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac were rescued by our government seven years ago following the housing bust. Since then, they've paid back $50 billion more than their $186 billion bailout. That dough's gone back to the Treasury Department. But now, there is a new push to recapitalize and release them. The Obama administration has, says, has said it will not pursue that course of action, instead desiring a broader overhaul of the housing finance system from Congress. But according to our next guest, if the administration stays the current course, millions of homeowners and private shareholders will be affected. For more, we welcome in the former Undersecretary of Commerce who served in the Clinton administration, Dr. Robert Shapiro. He's also the former campaign economic advisor to President Obama and the chairman of Sonicon, a finance consulting company. Dr. Shapiro, we appreciate your time here on Newsmax Prime. It's a pleasure to be here, J.D. So I just want to get this straight. The government essentially uh, took over most of the responsibilities of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac in exchange for the bailout to keep them going. How did that differ from the situation when we thought of them, I guess, really as government sponsored entities prior to the housing bust? Well, prior to the housing bust, uh, Fannie and Freddie were owned entirely by private shareholders. Uh, they did have a charter from the Congress, but they were privately owned, and so they were government-sponsored private enterprises. Uh, the government now owns 80 percent of the holds 80 percent of the stock of Fannie and Freddie, and that was in exchange for the 189 billion dollars in rescue funds that they provided Fannie and Freddie. But the fact is, Fannie and Freddie have kind of shrunk in their impact on housing because um, they had enormous losses and so it was harder for them to go about their normal business which is to guarantee the mortgages that private banks and thrifts uh, pro uh, provide homeowners and um, to buy those mortgages usually packaged in groups into securities from banks and thrifts. The fact that Fannie and Freddie is there to guarantee mortgages and to buy the mortgages which have been uh, written by banks and thrifts allows those banks and thrifts to then pro uh, offer more and more mortgages. Well, so well, it and, really and, and, is a fundamental and, piece of the way the housing market operates. Uh, understood. But with the housing market, despite some improvement, uh, there are still concerns, especially when it comes to reserves uh, and, and yes. cash reserves and the ability to deal with the monetization. Couldn't Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac not having them really add to the instability of the housing market? Well, Fannie and Freddie um, are now under a requirement as what are called systemically important financial institutions, or SIFIs, um, to hold um, about 4% capital reserves. That is the same kinds of capital reserves that J.P. Morgan Chase has to, has to provide, or Bank of America. Um, and, you know, in the housing crisis, uh, the reason they went down, Fannie and Freddie, was that their reserves were closer to a half a percent, uh, which would put them on the par with Lehman Brothers and Merrill Lynch, which also went down. So there is, there have been provisions to make sure that Fannie and Freddie um, don't go down as easily as they did last time, at least, in a crisis. And with a but minute the real thing. issue here is, um, will they, once again become a private enterprise and can they fulfill their role as both an institution that allows banks and thrifts to offer many more mortgages than they otherwise would and, and, and this is what I want to get to because with a minute remaining housing. Robert with a minute remaining you've issued a report mm -hmm. saying that once again selling private shares of uh, Fannie and Freddie would uh, would really be great for affordable housing with the minute that remains why is that well there are two reasons one is you know if they sell shares 
they get capital, and that allows them then to carry out their functions, which, which provide such enormous support for the private banks and thrifts that are offering mortgages. In addition, Congress set up two trust funds to support affordable housing programs from the states, uh, which are in very, very drastically short supply. And what we would do is we would, on the one hand, float new stocks so we would get private shareholders, and we would take the value of the government's current holding of Fannie and Freddie and turn it over to these trust funds that will support affordable housing. And we will have to leave it right there. Robert Shapiro, we appreciate your insights. We'll have you back to talk more about it in the days ahead.